out how Carnival Corporation is using technology to rewrite the cruise experience on board its Princess Cruise fleet. We are pleased to have John Padgett, Chief Experience and Innovation Officer, Carnival Corporation, join us here in Singapore, and he will be interviewed by David Pala, Global Head, Travel and Hospitality for Amazon Web Services. David, over to you. Go for it. So the uh, primary theme, I think, of today is rewrite. To me, it's fascinating to be joined by somebody who I think has really been at the center of rewriting the book on how technology and guest experiences are coming together. John Padgett spent the past 15 years working to ensure that we all get the most out of our incredibly precious and very valued vacation time. If you've been to a Disney World resort in the past 10 years or so, um, you've probably benefited from at least one of his incredible innovations, the FastPass Plus, and perhaps one of Disney's most iconic products, the Magic Band. Today, as Chief Experience and Innovation Officer of Carnival Corporation, JP is really transforming how technology uh, blends with the guest experience. His power and, and the power of a particular service or application or capability called the Ocean Medallion. So joining us live from Miami, Florida, is JP. JP, are you there? I'm here, David, can you hear me? I can hear you. I would love Excellent. to see you as well. The Gremlins are definitely uh, still with us, but a pleasure to have you here in the Marina Bay Sands. And thank you for joining us to share a little bit more about this exciting uh, capability. Now, Absolutely. Thanks for having that, me. Thank you. Uh, next time, hopefully, you'll be here in person with us in Singapore. You know, undoubtedly, I think one of the most intriguing and perhaps you know, tech-related developments overall in this complex travel industry over the past five years has been the creation and the deployment of the connected guest experience platform, the Ocean Medallion Wearable. And so that's been deployed on ships across the Prince's Cruise Line. So maybe you could just give us a brief introduction. What is this platform? What's it all about? Absolutely, David. You know, it, it is what you just said. It's all about connectivity. And to me, it's always been about maximizing the value, the value of the vacation experience because time is priceless on vacation. So where the Magic Van that you mentioned at Disney was all about eliminating friction so guests could consume more experiences across their vacation time, the Ocean Medallion is all about that experience personalization and making that connection, which makes that particular experience more valued from a guest perspective. So, and of course, eliminating friction too. So if you increase that value of that experience and you eliminate the friction allowing guests to consume more, you've created value for the guest, you've created value for the enterprise and everyone wins, even those financial folks that question the experienced folks sometimes. Uh, but, you know, the medallion is a wearable device, but it requires nothing from the guest. All the guests does is have to have it. And the reason for this is because the secret sauce is not the medallion itself. It's the persistent connectivity that the medallion provides to the individual to this overall ecosystem that you stage the guest experiences on. You know, let's face it, almost every enterprise in travel is a victim to the reservation system or the property management system. Then they tack on a retail system, they throw in a table management system, add a ticketing system, they integrate it all and they call it a platform. That's not a platform. That is an integration of a bunch of applications. So from what we did literally six years ago, it was pretty ambitious at the time, is we truly put the guest at the center of our ecosystem. And then we embedded our IoT in all the physical interactions across all of our physical platforms. And then we sandwich all the experiences in between driven by intelligence. So those services can be the utility services, whether it's, it doesn't matter whether you're a casino or a theme park, 
a inclusive, a cruise ship, you know, you have to make sure your guests are uh, healthy, safe, secure. You have to make sure they're connected. You have to make sure they have access to their rooms, their state rooms, their gangways, the experiences. And you have to ensure that they can pay for goods and services. So those are like the core utilities that are all fundamental. And to us, those should just exist seamlessly. And then when you stage digital experiences, they can't be a distraction from your core physical experience. They need to be complementary. So whether those are media experiences or on-demand uh, products and services or uh, you know, any type of communication, wayfinding, all that works driven by intelligence. And then it essentially your brand layer, if you have a true platform, is really just changeable, almost like a jukebox from the 60s. You just put in another brand layer and you execute the same experience because whether you are a casino or a cruise ship or an inclusive destination, look, the fact of the matter is we all do the same thing. We're just doing it in a different style, in a different method, in a different physical location. We you know, lodge guests, we give them great food, beverage, and services, we entertain them, and we keep them safe and secure, and that's really what travel's all about. So JP, tell me a little bit more about this medallion that I'm wearing now, and tell me, how has it been received by your guests? Well, I gotta tell you, the uh, medallion has been uh, amazingly received. You know, um, in the in the theme park space, the uh, Magic Band was about 50% of the guests, and the medallion on our Princess Medallion class cruising cruise ships is 99.8 something. Um, and those few guests that leave it behind actually come ask for it in a next day or two because they realize it's almost like having a luxury vehicle and still using your manual key, even though you can open the door without any kind of, so it just doesn't make sense. And the essence behind it is because the medallion is for the benefit of the guest. It's not for the benefit of the enterprise. And so when you think about big data and information, the guests aren't concerned with sharing information about themselves, number one, if they trust your brand, and then number two, you invest it back in that experience, maximizing the value of that experience because it's priceless. And so that's why the medallion has been so successful with our guests. It's awesome. Now you're wearing your medallion on your chest pocket. I've obviously got mine on the wrist. Why did you go for a wearable as opposed to perhaps the omnipresent mobile phone? Well, you know, it's very interesting because to me, that's actually not about technology decision. That is about having ubiquitous participation of everyone on your ecosystem, else your operation is saddled with running multiple processes and become very inefficient because everyone is not connected. And then when you do that, you ensure that the guest is winning, the operation is winning, and the business is winning. And for any strategy, for any large enterprise to actually become successful in the long term and just not be a kind of a a flavor of the day project, all three of those dimensions have to win. You know, the universe of mobile devices is ever growing and actually is tremendously complicated with various downloads, various operating system versions, application versions, updates, security patches, connectivity. And so there's absolutely no way if you want essentially 100% of your guests to be part of your ecosystem to solely rely on a mobile device. Now, don't get me wrong, a mobile device is a hugely valued option in our ecosystem, but your participation in our ecosystem is not dependent on that mobile device. You know, glass is kind of glass. And so from our standpoint, if you're really providing a personalized experience or you're really providing a simplified experiences, you can't complicate the experience out of the gate by talking to people about the complications of, hey, do you remember your logon ID? Do you have your app store password? Is your payment right? Did you get the debt right version down? And your operation is just trying to embark a ship. You know, so you have to really think about the, that operation in that game. And so the medallion just takes all the complexity away. 
Is there a entry cost to it? Absolutely. You know, this this actually costs something to give to your guests in the upfront. But at the end of the day, it's about the cost of a cheeseburger. So if you can't run a fully intelligent operation and get more advantages than the cost of a cheeseburger, then you know I don't know what you're doing. You need to be careful talking about food at this time. It's a little late in Singapore and the People here haven't eaten for a little while, but I know this has been a, a tremendous sort of technology undertaking and transformation undertaking for you and the Carnival team. Can you tell us just a little bit about the amount of work that's really been involved in sort of fitting out your floating cities to embrace the medallion? And also perhaps a little bit about the human transformation for, your, for also your crew and guests that's been involved um, through this project. Absolutely. You know, creating a smart city is not for the uh, faint of heart. And although I'm looking at Sentosa and I'm thinking that should be a smart city and that should have our platform, at least from my perspective. But, <laughs> at the, you know, the first thing is the things that people like to talk about as the hard stuff that's not all that hard if you plan carefully. Look, in a 10 to 12 day dry dock, We'll install around 75 miles of cable, 6,000 sensors. We'll install 4,000 interactive portals. We'll outfit 2,000 crew members with mobile devices. We'll install hundreds of edge computers. And we all do that in that two-week time frame, which was already packed with activities because a cruise ship is only programmed to actually stop. 12 to 14 days out of every three year period. And so you have that window. So that was one of our biggest challenges is when we were starting out this, this concept, this vision, it was, well, even if you can get that to work, there's no way you can get it installed without ruining the economics of the, the ships that have been set up when they were originally performed. So we had to fit in that envelope. So that is all about intensive planning, kitting, and just making sure that you have great teams to execute. But your, your other question is to me, or your embedded question is even more important, which is about people, about operations, about team member transformation. And so when we talk about guest experience transformation, digital transformation, I can't emphasize enough is you have to consider your team members. You have to consider your operations. They have to win. So my first goal in making a guest experience better for any guest is actually to make the job of the operator easier. Because then they'll make sure the guest loves it. But if you make the operator's job harder, they're going to make sure the guest doesn't love it. And so it really doesn't matter how great it is, even if it's great. And so, um, you know, what I like to say is let's ensure that the operations teams get to do what they do best, which is interact with our guests, take them out of the transaction business, get them back into the interaction businesses, which is why most of them join the hospitality arena in the first place. It's not their fault we've somehow been a cobbled together systems property management reservation uh, system dependent uh, you know, uh, industry, and then that hurts their, their passion for life. So to me, it's all about, let's get, those, let's get the crews, let's get the teams, let's get them all allowed to focus on what they do best, which is interacting with guests. You really are managing floating cities, as you say, and you're managing you know, lots of data points and transactions every single day um, from your from your guests, but also from your crew members. So, what's happening with all that data? What are you using that data for? How does how, how does the guest benefit from from all of that interaction? You know, it's it's so interesting because we estimate because it's it's literally impossible to quantify that we're creating about a hundred million intelligence events a day per ship. And so essentially in one day on one ship, once it's fully connected into our ecosystem, you're more intelligent than the whole history of that industry before that was not a connected industry. So it's, it's hard to comprehend. Um, and the uses of intelligence becomes infinite. And so we're just barely scratching the surface. And what what I've learned uh, both at, in the 
you know, Disney Enterprise and now the Carnival Enterprise is this concept of business intelligence and big data, it's it's a lot more flawed than people think because you know you you think you get it all, and then naturally you're smart and it and humans have a hard time consuming that information and so uh, you know you can build as many rooms as you want and fill them with as many screens as you want and put as much data as you want and impress your executives as much as you want. But it doesn't, that really doesn't help your operation. You know, the concept of a digital clone uh, is really not foreign to us because we have so much intelligence, we can essentially become cloning of reality. But the real secret is ensuring that intelligence benefits the guest. And that's the whole purpose of our IoT embedded in the first place because we wanted to make sure the bargain with the guests was fair. If you connect to us, you know, we know we're creating intelligence. You should know that I'm investing that intelligence back to you in real time because it's yours. It's not mine. I'm just using it at your permission to make your experience great. You know, Guests are not static CRM profiles, you know, in marketing databases. They are many personas that change and are dynamic across many vacations. So we want to make sure our intelligence is real time. And by the way, our intelligence, not to do a commercial uh, advertisement, happens to sit on David's uh, platform as well, uh, AWS. But the, you know, the notion of the intelligence driving in real time is very key. I like to simplify it and say perfect intelligence equals a perfect experience. Will we ever get to true perfect intelligence? I don't know, but that's the pursuit. Now our, our time is ticking, so I'm gonna ask you fairly quickly, given how seriously impacted the cruise industry has been by the current uh, pandemic, what part does Medallion and the Ocean Platform play in Carnival's return to service? Well, it's it's so interesting because five and six years ago, when we were establishing the basis for everything and designing the experience that we wanted to um, convey, it was really about four principles, empowering the crew, simplifying the process, personalize the experience, and foster those relationships. And many of the things that at the time were called nice to haves, especially from the finance team, uh, <laughs> like expedited arrival, touchless payment, contactless embarkation, disembarkation, even the notion of the medallion unlocking your stateroom door without touching anything, all have now essentially in a few months become fundamentals to, you know, fundamental to operating versus these nice to have glorious amenities. And so, you know, it's, it's so interesting, the speed at transformation. When, when things, when you don't have to change, generally people don't change. Um, so even the greatest services are hard to push forward. But when you're fighting for survival, like the entire travel industry has been at some level, change accelerates at a remarkable pace. And that's what we're seeing is the adoption of all these things that we've been working on for years are now kind of like fundamentals. Um, and so to me, it's all about intelligence. It's all about managing the guests. It's all about maximizing their experience because if you're truly given a personalized experience and if you're truly taking the hassle and frustration and friction out, which means contactless, then effectively you have the perfect post COVID experience which is unique to you on your demand without contact. And so we're, we're comfortable that we're prepared, um, but it's not, it hasn't been easy. And um, we just wanna be there to support the travel industry, you know, as everyone pursues these same goals because it's in all of our best interests to ensure everyone gets to travel again as soon as it's safe, healthy, and we can, uh, you know, adjust and adapt to all these protocols. Absolutely. I think we all wish you Godspeed with that mission. Uh, for, for folks watching us uh, today or, or here at live in the audience, what are perhaps one or two suggestions you would have for how they could embark on this journey if they wanted to use this type of technology or platform to enhance their guest experiences? 
Uh, there's always a couple of key fundamentals that I, when I'm asked that question, and the first one is, you have to have CEO board level commitment because this, this type of effort is not a project. It's not an IT initiative. It's a enterprise organization pursuit to perform at a higher level. And that performance takes all aspects. It takes your creative capabilities. It takes your technical capabilities. It takes your operation and business all to be in sync together. And all of that ultimately resides in the CEO and sponsored by the board. So you have to have that. There's no doubt about that. Um, the second thing is, is that you have to um, think about it holistically in a way that benefits the guest. And you have to stick, you have to stick to your vision, you know, because, you know, in today's tech world, it's kind of interesting. On one side, you have the classic IT waterfall methods that really don't produce much but a bunch of planning documents. And then on the other side, you have agile development, which uh, it's kind of like an excuse to do something different as soon as it gets hard. And so I like to kind of blend and work halfway in between, plan your destination, plan your right. vision, and then adjust your way till you get to that goal. So that's what all right, it's I'm all gonna, about. I'm gonna close out, JP, with just this very quick question. Love your thoughts on this. Back in 2002, as we're all watching Minority Report, the awesome Steven Spielberg movie, John Anderton, played by Tom Cruise, was escaping through a mall and all of the TV screens, the video screens around him started offering personalized ads targeting him as he was running and trying to be, be invisible at that time. Why has it taken 20 years for us to get to where we are today um, with this level of personalization? And where do you think we'll be in the next three to five years? Just a couple of you know, very quick remarks. Yeah, quick question. It's, you know, your question is incredibly insightful because that matrix is real. That matrix exists. You know, matrix seen across the digital, physical uh, dimensions all in real time, it now exists. And so that is not the future anymore. It takes a long time. It takes a long time because it takes commitment. It takes financial resources. The real world is hard. The real changing enterprises is difficult and it's a grind. And so, you know, you could say it took 20 years and that's a long time, but really, you know, think about it. Yeah, I don't know. It's amazing that it is actually not fiction. It is real. So it's great that we've achieved it, but you're right. It it's, it's a difficult grind in big organizations to uh, change them, but it happens. JP, I know it's early morning in Miami. I want to thank you on behalf of everybody here and Web and Travel. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you on a cruise soon. Have a great day. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to see you, David.